I'm Josh Wicks of Wicks Rods and Customs, and I proudly sponsor this video. My name is James Cameron. No, not this James Cameron. This James Cameron. I grew up in Coney Island, Brooklyn, New York. I now live in Virginia. But before all of that, I had another passion. I loved Rolls Royces. Well, a few years ago, I accomplished my dream. My purchase, a 1985 Rolls Royce Silver Spur. And that's where the nightmare began. But it was through trial and error that I discovered that there was a way to actually purchase these cars and maintain them that could save the buyer of future cars like this thousands of dollars. Now that is the sound of power. Let's take a trip. Come on. Come along with me. I have now taken that knowledge and will now share it with you. My name is James Cameron, and I want to welcome you to the Rolls-Royce and Bentley University Buyer's Guide. Let's start class. Well, class, I want to welcome you again to another uh, session. And again, we're going to be dealing with history uh, with Evan Morgans. And I want you to know, Evan, that I am going to email the queen and let her know that you should have a title in front of your name. It should be at least, the least they could do is call you Lord. There it is. Evan, it's great to see you again. And you. Thank you for inviting me again. Oh, man, the pleasure is always mine. And let me say my class. So let's get to it, shall we? You did a thing on the spirit of ecstasy. And class, I want you to know that before we started recording this, myself and Evan, we uh, talked about a few things. And I also spoke about how it was called the Flying Lady and how that designation sort of bugged me because the title of the piece is the spirit of ecstasy but evan in his knowledge said well wait a minute it's actually very true and there's a reason why it is also referred to as the flying lady and he explained it to me and what i want to do before we go any further is have Evan explain that part back again, because I think it's very important. So go ahead, Evan, tell them what you just told me. Well, hello. Um, the, the fact is that the, the, the mascot is often referred to as the flying lady. Right. Whereas its official title is the spirit of ecstasy. But in the, in the um, contract between Rolls-Royce and the designer of the mascot, uh, Charles Sykes, which I think was drawn up um, in 1909 or 1910, oh, yeah. um, it was referred to as the spirit of speed. So when it became the spirit of ecstasy, I, I don't know, and I don't know if anybody else knows. Mm -hmm. But um, what uh, the designer, Charles Sykes, who was born in 1875 and died in the 1950s, and in fact, his signature was on the uh, mascots for a, a lot of that time, once the design was approved. Um, he uh, imagined when he was taken for a ride by Lord Montague, who was his employer at the time, we're talking about 1909 in, in London. Lord Montague was an English lord who had an estate um, in southern England in the New Forest in Bewley which is now actually the British National Motor Museum. He knew Rolls and he knew Claude Johnson, who, who was the first managing director of Rolls and Royce. Anyway, he took, he was asked by Johnson if uh, Sykes could uh, produce a design for a sculpture that could be the mascot for the Rolls-Royce motor car. Mm -hmm. And uh, 
he took him out. And instead of envisaging, as you would if you were asked to do the same for Jaguar or Ford, mm -hmm. uh, something really masculine, a big, powerful bird or a, a tiger, he imagined a female mythical creature of the night mm. uh, known in uh, Greek mythology as a hamdryad. Mm -hmm. um, seeing the car, seeing how quietly and vibration free it was driving along and alighting on the radiator cap and reveling in the uh, warm summer evening air. Mm -hmm. Now he, he had form because he produced um, sculpture of Greek from Greek mythology of a uh, Sybarite uh, and, and even for the goddess of wine, mm -hmm. all looking very similar. But his greatest uh, piece of form, if you could put it that way, was he produced for Montague in 1909 a statue called the Whisperer. Right. Yeah. And yeah. the Whisperer what looks like the Flying Lady or the Spirit of Ecstasy. Right. But the girl has her finger over her lips as if she's saying whisper or don't say anything. And this is often alluded to, and I'll come to this later, uh, as the uh, mascot for this uh, sculptor mm -hmm. was in fact the mistress of Montague. Yeah. And this was their secret. And this is the only mascot in the world designed by Sykes that is predates the um, spirit of, spirit ecstasy, of ecstasy. Right. And the same model. Now, I want to go a little further uh, about the relationship with um well let us just say the lady and oh, yes, how yes. she plays a part in this she does indeed when i was the um editor of the rolls royce magazine in the 70s as well as being the public relations manager i used to have to edit this um international magazine and we all knew that um there was a, a model for the mascot Mm -hmm. And uh, but we wanted to know more about her. So I asked a journalist, uh, a, a superman who worked with me to, to look into the background. And this was before the era of the Internet. So we actually had to go into London, as it was. And of course, we discovered a hell of a lot more. And it was when he went to visit um, Lord Montague himself, the, the, the existing Lord right. Montague, who's now dead. And it's his son is now Lord Montague. But at that right. time, it was Lord Montague who was happy to talk about his father and his relationship with this model. Now to talk of a model nowadays, you, you may be talking about um, what we call the red tops, you know, the, um, the cheap press, but this wasn't the case. We're talking about a very, very elegant lady yes. who was employed um, by Claude Johnson. Remember he was the first managing yes. director of Rolls Royce. In the 1890s, they set up the what became the Royal Automobile Club in Britain. I don't know what it's called in America, the equivalent, but you know, the first yeah. car club, official one with uh, committees and, and taking motoring seriously. They and had she to. had a big role in that. She did in those days. I mean, horses ruled the road. So yeah. in Parliament, they didn't want these newfangled cars. They made them, they call, They had a red flag act where you had to walk in front, a man with a red yes. flag, and yes. so you could only go at they had an American five coat. miles an hour. Well, right. most of these cars could only do four or five miles an hour, but a lot of the young bloods were determined to go faster and have races, and especially in France, where they didn't have any of that rot about the red flag act. Yeah. Anyway, um, he set up the, helped set up the Royal Automobile Club, principally to fight Parliament's um, MPs who saw horses as the future. And um, he employed this young lady whose name was Eleanor Velasco Thornton. Mm -hmm. She, her father was um, an engineer, went all over the world. She went to school in London. I, I don't know how it came to be that he employed her, but she apparently was very attractive, dark flashing eyes. Mm -hmm. um, a, a wonderful woman, everyone who met her thought she was wonderful, very well educated. And uh, so she began to work for um, Claude Johnson 
as and he and so she met Charles Rolls because through that, right. through that. was a great friend of Rolls. Yeah. But it was a man called Henry Edmonds who introduced Rolls to Royce sure. in Manchester about the same time we're talking about. Mm-hmm. So Rolls, uh, because he knew of the uh, skills of Claude uh, Johnson in organising bits and pieces and the club and races, said to Eleanor, well, he, he knew that Montague was starting a magazine. So I think it was in about 1902 uh, that she went, then left uh, Claude Johnson and went to work for Montague. So, OK. We now have her. She's part of the company. She's helping him write these articles for this new car magazine. Called Car Car Illustrated. Right. So now what happens? He was employing a chap called Charles Sykes as an illustrator. Yeah, the sculpture. Yeah, this was a classical uh, train, a classic trained um, sculptor, Mm -hmm. uh, artist. I, I've seen lots of his work. And uh, so she she knew him well. Right. And she would often model for him. So the, we go back to when the company wanted this mascot because they were um, unhappy with what people were putting on their cars. Right. This was in 1910. Mm-hmm. And it was, we nobody knows whether it was Montague or... Uh, Johnson, but I mean, they, he'd been in both of their cars. These were silver ghosts, 40, 50 horsepower. Right. Um, he'd been out in them many times. But this on this one occasion, when they'd obviously discussed this at board level, he took out Sykes and said, want you to come up with something. What do you, what, what, what do you imagine? And of course, he'd already worked it out. It was a fairy. Mm-hmm. It's as simple as that. It was a fairy. Right. Because... Only a fairy. Remember, this was the period when most cars would shake like this. Yeah. As the pistons went up and down. Yeah. And yet it was a when the Rolls Royce came out, you could put a penny on its um, rim and Mm. it would stay there. Now, let's talk about the tragedy, as it turns out, of this wonderful grand lady and with Montague. So. Let's talk about that. Well, first of all, let's just finish by saying that, 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 that when the company saw it, they loved these mascots. Mm-hmm. And, and they said to him, can you produce them? And he said, of course. But um, so she worked for him for 12 years. I'm just checking up on my notes. And then came the First World War. Right. So yeah. Montague was made, uh, as often happens if you've got a title, um, he was made colonel of his regiment. And so he went off, he was packed off to India because the British empire then wasn't just uh, fighting the Germans in um, Europe. Anyway, um, he came back, gave a report to the British government and then had to go out again back to India. And who went with him? But his faithful secretary. Secretary, yeah. Eleanor Thornton. But they did. They never made it. They never made. Uh... No, they never made it because um, off Crete, on in in uh, December of, in fact, it was December the twenty sixth. Uh, there was a submarine waiting for them, U uh, boat thirty eight, mm-hmm. and it fired a torpedo at the ship they were on, which was the SS Persia. So they were they were in the dining room on that morning. Um, Apparently, it went down so fast, stern yeah. first. She and he were dragged under in that. Uh, and then, yeah. you know, the vortex, all the air yeah. was blown out. Yes. He went to the surface. She never did. She never, so yeah. she never, she never came to the surface. I must just mention this. The memorial plaque in the Paris church of Bewley uh, says... Um, Erected by John, Second Lord Montague of Bewley, in thankfulness for his miraculous escape from drowning after the sinking of the SS Persia, and in memory of Eleanor Velasco Thornton, who served him devotedly for 15 years, drowned December the 30th, 1915. But what I felt when I wrote this piece here was. This isn't the only memorial to Eleanor. 
mm. as I say at the end, she stands proudly on the front of every Rolls Royce car ever made since 1911. And her spirit is in ecstasy right. at the sheer delight of riding the Zephyrs and in the owner's delight of seeing her do so while bestowing a magic to any journey when, as you know, you sit in a Rolls Royce car yes. and see this beautiful mascot in front of you. So, Evan, listen, I want to thank you for being part of this discussion and bringing your history and also your insight onto my class. And, you know, again, hopefully we'll see each other again shortly and I will go and read the second part. We will indeed, and I'm happy to be a part of it and look forward to future contributions. Absolutely, absolutely. And thank you for being a part of this. So Evan, cheers, class, you be well, safe driving. Thanks for watching class. If you have a Rolls Royce or Bentley motor car, and you'd like to have it highlighted in this series, drop us a line. Also, we are starting a Patreon page. You can go to Patreon, look up Rolls and Bentley University, and you will find us to support our channel. And lastly, if you are coming to the Hampton Roads area and you'd like to take a historical tour in my 85 Rolls Royce Silver Spur also, go to our email address, drop a line, and I will respond to you. Until next time, class, drive safe.